What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Ask Assist P podcast. It's a complimentary podcast to the other side of the firewall podcast that we do on a weekly basis. So on that show, Monday and Tuesday are topics, Wednesday discussion, and then uh, Fridays is everything else. But we we have a, uh, it's a special place in our heart for Thursdays, right? Where we have the Ask Assist P podcast, where I get to talk to uh, members of the community who are uh, either pioneers and leading uh, in, in some sort, right? Those uh, uh, people who've made to the C-suite, senior level positions, uh, as well as those who are trying to break in. But this gentleman right here is definitely not trying to break into cybersecurity, right? Like this is one of those pioneers that we talk about, one of those glass ceiling breakers. Uh, so I'd like to introduce everybody to uh, Jai Salters. He uh, he is a community uh, figure, a, a CEO, a founder, and a leader in the community. Uh, but I don't want to mess up any of your titles. So I'd like for you to do a, a quick introduction of uh, who you are, and then we can go into your uh, cybersecurity origin story. No, absolutely. Hey, my name is Jay Salters. Uh, I've been in uh, cybersecurity for God knows when, uh, for quite some time. Uh, so um, I'm originally, uh, I'm active duty military, so I'm currently still active. I've uh, been serving the military for 20 years in the Navy. Uh, I'm currently a cryptologic warfare officer. And so uh, a a benefit of doing my job also entails with dealing with cybersecurity aspects. And so um, early on in my career, I've been able to have the fortune opportunity from going from a cryptologic warfare officer or a cryptologic technician to learning and dabbling a little bit into some cybersecurity because there's a little bit of a, a, a bleed over there as far as opportunities, um, working with cyber units, working on cyber equipment, um, and being able to look at different type of exploits um, and so I've been fortunate enough to have that uh, in my career, and that's kind of trajectory me to where I'm at now, um, or at least pivoted me to where I'm at now, to where I like what I do in cybersecurity, but helping others is more so my passion. So I've started the Act Now Education Organization. It's a nonprofit that essentially we help people upskill and reskill, uh, military community upskill and reskill, um, and then help them break into tech. And so uh, now we have a lot of programs that help support people get certifications that, that they're wanting in the industry that can help them open doors to to find opportunities for job employment and breaking into tech or breaking into cybersecurity. Um, it's not as hard as you think, but if you have the right resources, you have the right mentors, you have the right path, um, the direction, not one size fits all, but figuring out what works best for you, what opportunities are out there, then the, the opportunities are endless. Absolutely. And then that's awesome that you're you're currently doing all of the above and still on active duty. So then that that uh, makes more sense to something that you said within your your bio, right? So uh, a little bit behind uh, the scenes. I don't like to ask too many questions before uh, I do this specific episode, right? I, I like to learn just like the audience is learning because I think it helps me with asking questions that I'm interested in, right? But I, I do a little bit of homework. Don't get me wrong. But within your bio, right? So he says you're dedicated to providing a thousand military personnel and spouses with job pr prospects in tech before my 2026 retirement. So, so far you have 36 placements and you have 964 more to go uh, before 2026. So when I saw that, I was like, the math ain't mathing, right? Like, <laughs> I was like, retirement. I was like, didn't, didn't look that old. But I, 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 uh, I honestly uh, couldn't tell if you were still active duty or not. And uh, I, Wanted to kind of learn that on the uh, the podcast, so that's awesome that you're you're currently doing that while also doing this initiative, uh, and and you're you're on pace to definitely hit your uh, your initiative. So uh, where does that come from? Like where did that decision? Uh, how was it made that you wanted to hit a thousand before your uh, your your date of retirement? I was just thinking about my retirement. Right, um, I am I am where I am because a lot of mentors helped guide me here. Uh, I'm from New York. I was a hard head person when I joined, joined the Navy. Uh, it took a lot of mentors to get me on the right track. And I'm grateful for that. Um, if it wasn't for uh, those individuals early on in my career helped guiding me, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't think I would be where I am now. Even when it came to getting into entrepreneurship, business opportunities, being out there uh, publicly speaking about opportunities that's related to the military community, all those things. Uh, I, I would never consider being in my path, right? The reason I joined the military is because I couldn't afford college. And so I was like, hey, this is a an opportunity for me to be able to do that. But uh, lo and behold, uh, once I joined after a certain amount of years, uh, I think probably about nine or 10, 
I didn't have a degree, didn't have any certification, things I joined for, right? And then I started going after that, getting that because essentially I wanted to transition out of the military. Um, and so I realized that in order for me to do that, I have to set myself up for success and then start getting into those things. So I went from not having anything to knocking out about 16, 17 different certifications within a year, knocking out my associate's degree, getting put in prestigious bachelor's degree program, um, all quick succession, right? And so I was like, if all these things are available uh, and I'm not paying out of pocket and these are great resources of helping me upskill, reskill, I wonder what else is out there. And so I started providing that information out to other folks so that they can utilize and take advantage of it um, and do as I, as I was doing. And so um, that's where it all started. A lot of people struggle when they transition out of the military or looking for opportunities, right? They don't really know how to articulate their skills and they don't really know what um, their value, right? That value add, what do you bring to the table? How do you articulate that? How do you speak to an employer about what you can help them with? What problems can you solve? And so for me, uh, this has always been like a homegrown initiative, like a, a passion project of mine. Like if I go out the military and I'm retiring, what what can I do, right? I want to, I don't want to just have a retirement ceremony, like, right? Everyone has that. And that's no, there's nothing wrong with that. No shade for the folks that do that. But I was just like, I want to do more. Right. I, I want to be able to say, hey, I made an impact on my community, however small, however so small it is. But I was like, hey, if I can get a thousand people into roles before I retire, um, I think that's a noble goal to have. And, and I'll be able to help so many in their families. And so uh, that's what pretty much started my initiative to be able to do this and, and drive towards that goal. No, that that's a, a amazing. Yeah, and that's definitely a. Um something something greater than yourself right so i i hear exactly what you're saying like the navy retirement ceremonies by the way no joke is like some yeah. of the best i've seen uh bar none but I, I i get that like what uh what what is your legacy outside of mm -hmm. uh you what you what you've done um uh career wise what else have you done um in your i, I don't want to say philanthropy but i guess nonprofit, so to speak um so with that being said uh i also see that you you do have uh, a nonprofit, and uh, we we kind of touched on some of those initiatives. But if someone wanted to um, kind of uh, find out what you're currently doing, uh, like any specific initiatives you want to bring up, and just uh -huh. how they can contact you to, to uh, either enroll or pursue uh, uh, one of the uh, the programs you have going. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll run you down a list of what we do and how we do it. Um, uh, the first thing is we have a community. Uh, it's about 65,000 members within the military community. Um, and it's active duty, uh, transitioning service member, retiree, uh, re reservist, military spouse, veteran military spouse. Um, we pretty much focus on the military community at large. And with this in this community, we provide free resources. Our focus is free resources that's available to you. There's over 40,000 different free resources out there for the military community. Not a lot of people know about them. So like I said, we we want to bring that to the forefront so that people can take advantage of these different opportunities and have an impact on their career. Um, and so that's our, our Facebook group. And we, like I said, anyone can join our Facebook group. And then for the, some of the programs we have, we have currently four programs that's ongoing. The first one is Coursera. We have a partnership with Coursera that they offer 7,000 courses, about 500 specialties and 27 certificates. And you can get some of those certificates like Google IT support, cybersecurity. Uh, Google has a cybersecurity uh, cyber uh, certificate. Do you have IBM's uh, cyber certificate, uh, cybersecurity certificate and data analyst uh, certificate? Um, you have, you also have like most of those certificates or some of those certificates do have college credits associated with them. And so you provide that all for free. So all you have to do is sign up for our account. Then we're also partnered with Splunk. Splunk has three cert certifications that they offer. They have about 12 classes that you would have to take. Um, so you get through those 12 classes and then you're able to apply for those certifications, those vouchers and knock that out. And then we have our main programs for um, ActNow uh, members, which is the three cert cohort and uh, cert to success. I'll talk about the three cert cohort first and then I get into cert to success. Uh, cert to success. Three cert cohort focuses on it's our, our transition program. Essentially, we're providing uh, our military community with an opportunity to get certified in three high-level industry certifications. Excuse me. 
uh, three high level certifications. So one of them is PMP, SEC plus, and then and Scrum. And so that's in succession back to back to back. And so within a nine week period, you're knocking out these three certifications. We also provide employment readiness. We give you a professional um, resume. We give you a telemade business suit. We give you, uh, connect you to a Fortune 500 mentor. And then you also do mock interviews. And lastly, we give you a professional headshot. And all that's for free. If you look in the back, I don't know if you can see it, but on the right-hand side, yeah, yeah. there's about 30 suits over there. So those are the suits I have to ship off uh, to our last cohort that just completed the three-cert cohort. And then we have Cert to Success, which is very similar, but it's really focused on one certification. Um, and it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as a three-cert cohort, but it still does have enough to kind of get you going and get you started. So the certs that we have on there are CSSP, we have the CMC, uh, CMMC um, CCP certification. We have uh, Splunk. We have any cloud-based certifications. And, and those are really just focused on one particular certification for a particular demographic. So in next month, August, we're going to be doing the military, excuse me, we're going to be doing the military spouse program. And our military spouse program is focused on Scrum. And so we are going to help about 30 to 50 military spouses get certified in Scrum. Uh, they're going to do actually live sprints with us. They're going to work on projects that help our community, and then we're going to connect them to employers. And so the next go around may be veterans, the next go around may be transitioning service members. And that's those are the programs that we currently run. That's awesome. And is that uh, also, um, I guess, adjacent or do you work with SkillBridge uh, as well, or is it completely separate? It's completely separate. We didn't want to take um, the opportunity of utilizing someone's skill bridge. So all this stuff is is a separate okay. from that. And so I know there's a lot of organizations that do tie it into skill bridge, but we're not. Like everyone on the team is volunteers. Everyone does this because they care. 100 percent of the funds that we get go back to the community. So um, no one's paid. We all do this because we, we really want to make a difference in our community. No, that's awesome. So don't let me do, uh, do take you off the rails because I know you have something else that you want to add as well. As far as uh, what the program, right? Yeah. So you so you said you had the uh, the the three cert track. Then you had the the one that's uh, the cert specific. Success. Yeah, no, right. I kind of talked about that. That one's like it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Is is um, the three cert, but it, it does cover down one particular cert. But that's the one that has this. Okay. This, uh, it. CSSP. Um, it has. I think C system is in there. CISM, CISM is in there. I believe the CCP is in there. So there's there's a quite a few certifications, but that one's a little bit more technical based. Whereas right. with the three cert, uh, it's the PMP Sec Plus, or it could be the PMP or Project Plus. Um, Sec Plus is usually the core one, and then we have um, the Scrum certification. And so we those are interchangeable. But as far as like the certs of success, we're really trying to focus on honing in a particular skill set. Uh, within the cybersecurity realm. And so being able to identify what demands are currently out there and then aligning those with those that that the, those demands, those job demands. No, that, that's uh, that's amazing. So for you to be able to do it with uh, all volunteers, uh, how does that process work? Like if someone wanted to work with you to, to volunteer their time, how could they do so? Yeah, put in that work. Uh, everyone on the team, <laughs> yeah, everyone on our team is is passionate about this. And, and don't get me wrong, is a lot of people say they want to volunteer with us. But when they see the work, they're like, right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's because it's a lot of work. Um, it's you, you. It has to be more of a, a a thing that's a part of you than a thing that you want to do. Uh, it, it, I really can't explain it in the best way. But my team is is by far one of the best teams I've ever worked with. They are really determined. They spend more than 20 hours a week. And these people have full-time jobs, right? And they're right. just doing this to be able to help out. Like give you an example, Tyrone Hewitt, who is the guru of transitioning. Um, he spends about 20 hours a week approving people's Coursera accounts. And so that type of dedication, you know, and 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 not being paid, but that type of dedication as a volunteer uh, goes right. above and speaks well to his character. But there's a reason why he does it, right? Because he understands that people will send him a message saying, hey, I got a job because you allowed me to get this Coursera account that allowed me to get this certification or certificate done that now, you know, I'm working for this employer because of it. And we just got a message like that in the last week, last week or so. So those help us, those help us fuel what we're doing and push what we're doing. 
No, that's, I, I keep saying the word amazing, right? I'm trying to think of something, uh, I'm trying to express my vocabulary in a certain way, but no, just, just the sheer amount of, like you said, effort and work for an all volunteer force who are all, uh, you know, uh, or I don't know if all of them, but the, a lot of them have full-time jobs or active military or things of that nature. Uh, and that's that, that's a, a huge movement. And then you said the Facebook group itself has thousands of, uh, of uh, attendees as well. Um, so like you're, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of baffling that you're able to, to run such a, a, a large operation while still on active duty. And, uh, by the way, you, you have a, um, a position. So I'd like to go into that as well. So yeah. I saw recently a, a post, right? So we, we connected, uh, we scheduled the time, but we didn't really interact. And then I saw a, a post, uh, kind of welcoming you into your, your new role. Yes. So my new role is uh, I'm, I live in Ellicott City, Howard County. And so I recently uh, was uh, appointed as a commissioner for the military veterans, and, I mean, veterans and military families uh, commission supporting the military community within Howard County. Uh, that's that's a new undertaking for me. Um, and it's really, you know, just getting in front of the problem sets that my county faces with with our military community and being able to provide resources, opportunities and understanding uh, their needs to be able to address those. I think that when, when I when I when we're focused on, you know, doing for others and giving back to the community, like service is all I know, uh, whether it be in the military or outside the military. And so I saw this is a good opportunity for me to be able to do so um, and something I can learn a lot from. Uh, in terms of of looking at policies and things that can help locally affect our community. And I kind of started in the reverse order, right? I, I started doing things nationwide. And, and then I was like, well, what am I doing locally? And so let me see what I can do locally and how I can give back to the community directly. No, I, that is a, a great undertaking. So uh, I, I know a lot of people are probably wondering the same thing. I'm wondering as well is like, how did you find more than 24 hours in a day? Like how did... <laughs> <laughs> are you able to make all these things happen uh, with a finite amount of time? Yeah, that that's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Right. <laughs> in the process, right? Uh, it's 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 really just you know just being able to manage your time as best as possible. Um, you know, in the military, we we are we are kind of given uh, some unique skill sets of of being able to do more with less. And so uh, if you're looking at how to best manage manage your schedule, how to best be able to kind of time block what you got going on, it kind of helps out, right? And so for me, um, running the nonprofit is definitely, uh, it's a full-time gig. I don't, absolutely, don't get, don't get me wrong in that. But having the right people in place and trusting them to be able to do the things that they need to do helps and makes that a little bit more of an efficient process, right? You can't, though it's something I created, I, I trust in my team to be able to deliver on different aspects. Now I do a lot of work in, in, in that regard as well, but I do make sure I manage myself uh, correctly as far as like what I have tasks and what my priorities are. And it's all based off of my priorities. What are the key things that I need to get done this week? And then what are some of the things I can push off for the next week? I have goals, but they're all goal-based um, priorities. Like this is what I'm trying to get done in this time frame based off of what my breakdown is. And I kind of live my schedule by like a 12 week schedule. So I break everything down. My year is a 12 week, 12 week, uh, a year. So essentially look at the things that I have coming up, the things that I want to knock out within this, this 12 weeks. And then, um, things that, uh, I need to bring to, um, things I may need to push down aside that not, not, not directly need to get done right away, but something I can work on a little bit later. And so, between my nonprofit, I do have a for-profit. Um, I have two for-profits, and then I have the uh, Howard County Commission uh, position, and then my active duty. You just, I just have to balance in my family, of course, in my right. family, you have to balance <laughs> it all, right? And so, uh, you just have to be really a cognizant of your time and what you do. Do I get it wrong right every time? No, I don't. Uh, it's sometimes uh, I spend a lot more time on one thing than the other, but to me, it's like more of an ebb and flow, right? When I focus on things um, based off of priority. It helps me kind of get my mind in, right, in order. But if I'm just thinking about every single thing that I need to get done, you can get you can get overwhelmed easily. Um, so it, it kind of helps me look at it from that perspective. No, that, that's that's a, an interesting way of looking at it. The uh, the 12-week 
uh, schedule. Um, and and did, is that a, a methodology that you picked up uh, from a something you specifically were taught, or is that just something that you built yourself to say yeah. this is how I can manage my time more effectively? Yeah, this is something that I picked up. Um, so one one thing I I am a big proponent of is um, making sure that if you're spending, so for me, like I was spending eight hours a day doing my job and sometimes more than that, uh, doing my job for the Navy, uh, I'll get home, spend some time with my family and then, uh, you know, crash after that. Uh, but I was like, you know, if I'm spending eight hours a day on working for uh, the Navy and I'm not spending any time on myself, then there's there's something wrong with that, right? because um, I want to be able to reinvest in myself so that I can get that return on investment so I can learn, see what other opportunities are out there. And then that's what kind of happened to me. So I started focusing on myself, spending roughly about two to four hours a day working on the things that help me learn. And so either it's books, podcasts, um, those things, right? And then being able to kind of understand what opportunities are out there, just searching for knowledge, hunger for knowledge, um, and then it's helped me understand that. And so I don't exactly remember what book it was or what podcast I may have been listening to. Um, but like I said, I've, I've, if, if it's good information, I'm digesting, right. seeing how I can fit it into my schedule, seeing how I can be more efficient at what I'm doing, because the information is out there. We just got to learn it. And that information can change us, impact us. And so that's that's kind of like my focus and what has helped me um, be able to manage better. Do I think I could have done this like maybe three years ago? No, no, absolutely not. Um, and it's not like uh, it's something that you kind of build out to. Is this just kind of like as right. things go, you you learn and you slowly grow. Um, but then you get to a point to where there's a lot of pieces moving around at one time. So what's 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 your number one priority? What's your things that you need to focus on? And so that's helped me kind of get to where I'm at now. No, that that's a a, a very interesting resume, right? To to think so. Your um, uh, active duty career, on top of uh, the 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 nonprofit, you're a community leader. You have two for profits. So like, obviously, uh, the future looks like entrepreneurship. Once yeah. you do decide to to uh, retire yes. from the uh, the military, do you know specifically what type of sector you're trying to go into? Like, do you have do you have like because I, I don't want to spoil anything. In, in no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Government contract all <laughs> the way. Like... Government contract all the way. <laughs> I got um, you. Yeah, it's it's just I love entrepreneurship. Is uh, and the crazy thing is, in 2015, if you would have asked me anything about being an entrepreneur, I'd be like, no, that's not for me. Um, but like I said, I had a mentor sit me down, had a real candid conversation, and say, why not you? Uh, and that one question, you know, planted that seed. That was like, oh because of these reasons or because of that reason. But like, really, it was just surface level uh, responses. So I was like, let me dive into this and see what this is about. And then when I started learning things and helping people, um, I went in from not knowing much about entrepreneurship to taking advantage of some of the free programs like Boost to Business um, right. that, that uh, the military offers. I took advantage of... Um, uh, IVMF has a business program as well. I took advantage of that. And then I just started going to conferences, learning from that, went to the Military Influencer Conference, and then started working with people, found my tribe there. It's a group of six folks that we all started pretty much at the bottom floor. And uh, now everyone has pretty much built their business up to where some of the folks have their uh, their products in Whole Foods. Others have their products in Kohl's. Um, some folks have all the time rest, uh, relationships with all the exchanges to be able to sell products and services. And we all started together, right? And then for me, being able to run a nonprofit successfully and then have all the programs that we offer um, to help people upscale and rescale. And so that was one of the key things for me there. Um, but ultimately, I would say it, it's been a humbling journey, right? Just to learn about business, but I love entrepreneurship. Um, once you are able to make your own money, then it's, it's just different. It's, just, it's, it's really, it's just different. Um, I, I really can't talk much about it. It's, like I said, it's not, I know it's not for everyone, but uh, it, it, it was, and it is a unique situation too, because one of my first sessions where I had, while I was doing coaching, I was a coaching, but it was essentially talking to 
uh, uh, young budding businesses or entrepreneurs about how to manage their finances. And I'm not a finance major. And so this role, this job or the, 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 the webinar task was for me to talk about that. And it was sponsored through uh, Chase Bank. So I was like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a background in this. I don't, I don't know if I feel comfortable, you know, talking about this. And then they said, well, you know, we'll provide you all the content and material. And then we'll also walk you through the slides. I was like, oh, if you can give me the slides, I could talk about it. That, and so when they gave me the slides, just like anything I did in, in the military, I understood what um, some of the key elements was. I did my own research. I found additional information that can add value to it. And then I put it together and then put it out there. And then when I did that, a lot of people was like, oh man, that was great. You know, it's, how long have you been doing this? And asked me questions about that. I just started yesterday. Uh, I'm <laughs> just being honest. And uh, uh, it went from that to, hey, do you do you do coaching? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't have anything to coach you on, but I definitely know how to motivate people in the right direction and help them get their business uh, built and, you know, tell you everything that I've learned. And so that turned into providing a lot of coaching opportunities for uh, individuals to where uh, I was selected to run a, a, a cohort of sorts for young, young, but for restaurants, for black restaurants, um, is a black restaurant accelerator. And so it's a nine week program um, sponsored by Pepsi. And essentially I just tell restaurants how to scale to six figures and what they need to do, how they need to do it. Mind you, I don't own a restaurant. I just know business structure. I know business foundation. Um, and I know how to identify people's problem sets really fast and be able to help them kind of figure out how to maneuver that based off of what their revenue model is and what they look like, what they want to scale and their value proposition. And so those things all led me to what I'm doing now. Right. And so it's, it's, it's kind of been something like if you try it, you know, if it works out great, if you don't, you can learn from it. I don't, I don't take any L's just learn from all my lessons. Um, and then again, yeah, kind of got to where I'm at now. So I've, I'm my third year of doing the um, the BRAP, the Black Restaurant Acceleration Program. Uh, and this year we're actually hosting one in Baltimore where we're holding all of uh, the different, all the different restaurants. I think I helped over 40 different restaurants. All the different restaurants come together and they offer their foods and their services. Um, and so, like I said, that's become an opportunity. And I, I never thought I would be, you know, dealing with uh, business in that sense. But I, like I said, I just love the entrepreneurship aspect of it and being able to break things down show people different sides of business um because when you're running a business you're in your business um so i want to help people run their business but not be in their business kind of remove yourself from the business so that right. can its own. but yeah i know it's a lot there's a lot to no, say no no you, you said yeah, a lot of key yeah, things just, yeah i, I want to jump into so I, I definitely like the uh i don't want to forget the uh when you run your business you want to be you don't want to be in your business right you want to get out of the way of your business so i definitely want to come i want to go full circle back to that one but uh, I definitely want to also uh, just touch on entrepreneurship in, in general. Like um, there are a lot of programs, uh, either while you're still active or, or when you're in the process of transitioning, like you said, boost the, boots the business, uh, which is, is one that I, uh, I uh, followed through, uh, through TAP, right? So, so the transition assistance program. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are so many, it's somewhat overwhelming. And it's because... Uh, we're able, like, so as uh, as veterans, we're able to take advantage of uh, not having a lot of resources, having that 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 drive and that motivation, and also be able to outwork a lot of our peers on the outside. I'd say all of them, right? There are a lot of you know great uh, entrepreneurs that that never did a day in the military, but to to say we're just built a little different only because of the environment that we're uh, kind of uh, grown in, right? So there are a lot of opportunities. Yes. But then there's a lot of fear as well. So people will say, because, you know, well, I don't know if I want to run my own business. I don't know if I want to take that on risk on myself and things of that nature. But they forget that there's a lot of advantages that we have when it comes to the free education that we received. Right. We don't have we're not we're not buried under uh, a lot of uh, student debt. Uh, we also don't have the. Um, uh, necessarily need all of the medical that uh, depending on if you if you retired either from the the full twenty years or you're medically retired things of that nature where you have to rely on an employer to provide those benefits to you. So it's good to see as someone uh, like yourself be on the show, kind of saying like there there are no such things else right. These are just lessons that that you that you've learned and it, it can kind of help those who are listening. They're kind of on the fence right. Like yeah, I have all this opportunity, but. 
I don't know if I want to cross that line, right? I'd rather have somebody else take the risk on my behalf, not knowing, like you said, like making your own money is different. Like being your own boss is different. And then uh, I, I like how you said that uh, you help people get out of their own uh, out of their own way, basically, is to be able to run your business from the outside. So you're not, uh, I, I guess what my interpretation would be like, you're not uh, uh, micromanaging every aspect of it. No, 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 absolutely. And I'm helping them understand processes. But the biggest thing that in, in, in business is, to me, it's like 80% mental. Um, a lot of people are just in their own way. And so mm -hmm. I help them quickly identify what those things are, those limiting factors. Uh, and then that 20% is execution, right? Just being able to execute. Sometimes showing up in the right place is all you need to do. Uh, but for the most part, when it comes to people trying to get started, you know, you call it jumping off the porch, uh, you know, as a kid, you know, you're taking that right. risk. Off the bed. <laughs> like you, you have to understand the risk that you take when you don't do something that you want to do will cost you like if, if if you don't sacrifice for what you want what you want becomes a sacrifice mm -hmm. and so for me i didn't want to have anything that prevented me from you know taking advantage of some of these opportunities uh do i have a lot on my plate one would say yes absolutely um but like i said i try my best to manage it as best as i can but when it comes to what i've learned the value added i i can't get that in the school I can't get that in, you know, reading books. Um, I may get some aspects of that, but that trial and error, um, and don't get me wrong, it, it's not like I, I win every time. Uh, I definitely, like I said, I definitely learn my lessons. I don't call them losses, but I definitely learn my lessons. Right. But it just helps me understand how to maneuver, how to improve, how to get back at it. Uh, and that's only something you can do with experience. That's only something that you can do when you try. Because once you know that, hey, if I put myself into this position and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to make things happen, as long as you're leaning forward, there's going to be some type of results. Now, it may not be the results you want, but you can, you know, kind of tweak what those results are based off of what you're going through, what your experience is, reaching out to mentors, getting guidance. And so for me, it's it's the thrill of being able to explore those opportunities and and, you know, not letting myself get in my own way. Like I said, I, I didn't want to start a business when I first did this. And and someone would ask me back in 2015, uh, hey, you'll be doing these things. Do you? And I'm like, no, no, of course not. I just want to work for Google and like right. collect the paycheck, right? But, um, you know, it, it it's something that's, you're just challenging yourself, right? And you're just trying to build a better version of you. Um, and like I said, you may not get it right every time, but the risk that you you take when you don't do something is too great, right? And so for me, um, you know, that opportunity cost is not something I'm willing to uh, forego. And so I will definitely lead into those opportunities and see what kind of opens up. Um, I'll give you an example um, with the restaurants, right? I'm helping a lot of restaurants scale to six figures. I don't own a restaurant business. And so for me, I was just like, you know, I'm helping a lot of these companies do this. And, you know, my business is not on that level, you know, my business, I make decent money, but it's not like, you know, where it's, it's, it's substantial enough to be able to say like, Hey, this is how I base my business off of this. How I'll be able to scale it. And I was like, I'm, if I'm doing this for other businesses, I need to do this for mine. And, and crazy enough, I turned it around. Um, and within that month, I made three times my salary, which is well over six figures. But, um, this is what happens when you like challenge yourself, right? And you really like look at, hey, if I'm putting my back against the wall, how can I make this happen? What are the things I can do to uh, help grow my idea, my understanding? How can I plant that seed that's going to later bear fruit? I'm not expecting everything to happen instantaneously. I'm not expecting anything to happen right now. I put in the work now because I know that if I do that, make these sacrifices later on down the road, I'll see it. And so everything is is pretty much aligned with that. And I, I just know that as, as long as I continue to to do something for every action as a reaction, there's going to be some type of cause from what I'm doing. There's some type of effect from what I'm doing. And so that's kind of how I think about business in that sense. And that's the reason why I love it. It's it's not like a, you know, it's, it's not something where it's, it's a science to it, but granted, you know, some people have a, a good understanding of the business acumen. Um, for me, I'd like to, I just think I like the thrill of the deal, like working with people right. being able to say, hey, this is, 
this opportunity. Let me connect these folks. Let me make this happen. Um, it's yeah, this is it's, it's funny. You see, like I'm I'm happy. I know no, this is you're supposed to be talking about cybersecurity. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> so it, it's 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 a uh, like like yes, like uh, for the for the most part, the platform is for uh, those who are breaking in trying to to do stuff in cybersecurity. But just in general, like our our community is underserved and um, just doesn't know about all the opportunities. You know, not not for lack of trying, but it's it's hard to uh, sometimes. Uh, get the momentum when you don't see or have the access to people who uh, have a, a a shared community or a shared um, uh, demographic with yourself, right? Like it's 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 easier for you to achieve something if you can see somebody who looks like you or behaves like you uh, or you know et cetera. So it, it, I'm just glad to have you on the show, right? Like it, and if if anything, uh, even if no one were to listen to this episode, right? I've already I've picked up five or six different keys myself and motivation, right? So. Uh, that's why I, I don't like to ask a lot of questions before I get into it, like which probably is not the best for for a podcast host. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 but that's that, that's what the redo is for, right? That's when I, I get you back on the show, like you know, uh, before the the year is out. Like now, I've I've already learned who you are and your personality, and then we can go from there. But the initial on sale, I'm trying to get all of that information, just like the audience is, and I, I feel inspired, right? Because um, I, I think what's fascinating is how you said that you took. Uh, your own training, right? Like you're training people how to do a certain thing and in in growing their business. You're like, well, what if I focus this in inward? Like, what if I do this? Like, what will happen? And then from there, you, you saw immediate growth. Yes. Uh, it, it it reminds me of how, um, I, I can't remember where I picked this up from. It's either a, a podcast or a movie, but uh, it's, it's crazy how the people who are on Wall Street driving around the Rolls Royces with the, uh, the six, seven, eight digit bank accounts uh, the person managing their funds is riding the bus or the train, right? So like the person who's actually making th those moves happen is a, doesn't have the same wealth as the person that they're managing the money for. So uh, I, I mean, it's the same thing, but it's just that we're all kind of, not to say brainwashed, but there's a, we're comfortable, right? Yeah. With someone else taking the risk as yeah. opposed to like, you know what, what happens if I try it myself? And like you said, like every, every challenge is not going to be a, um, a success, but you you learn something, right? And then obviously it takes a certain uh, build of a person to be excited about those challenges because like for some that that fear is hard to get over, uh, and I and I get it and I respect it, right? Um, but again, I, I think our community has such a, a huge leg up being the, the veteran community because of all of the um, avenues that they present to us. Uh, it's just you don't see a lot of it until you're about to get out. <laughs> yeah. Like what could I have done while I was in? Uh, yeah. with this with this information right so it's good to see that you 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 like you said you're you're uh you're in the community doing uh doing your leadership you have a a, a position you have your your uh, your nonprofit your two for profits and you're still active right so now you have a mission like hey i want to uh i want a thousand people to have success as well before i finally say that this is uh the end of my military career and then uh i i 100 sure it's going to be uh, several businesses on the way out, right? Like I, I, when I look you up again, when you're when you're too high up for me to reach, <laughs> it's like, hey man, get back on the I'll always be reachable. I'll always be reachable. <laughs> I, I, I can see like, yeah. several businesses under your belt, right? So I, I think that's awesome. I, I think it does uh, spur and it, it motivates others who are listening to this. Like, you know what? I maybe I should try. Like maybe I should try to uh, as, at least see what uncomfortable feels like, and if I can get past it, because the the like again, not to uh, just make it a military podcast because people outside the military listen to this as well. But for those in the military, we are always in uncomfortable positions. We're always learning something new. It's always trial by fire. But then when you say, "Hey, uh, go ahead and do it for yourself," you're like, "I don't know about that." Yeah, <laughs> but you've been doing it for other people this entire time, right? The national security mission is no joke. You're put into a lot of precarious positions and situations. Your evals speak to it, but you don't see a lot of entrepreneurs. You see a, a lot, don't get me wrong, but you don't see as many as I believe there should be yes. uh, coming out of the military. And as I said, a wide market, a wide open market for it. And like I said, this is, um, one of my boys said this, he said, um, you know, if you went to go talk to a kid in Cuba or a, a teen and asked them, hey, um, do you what can you tell me about cigars and if he knew like nothing about cigars you would be like this that's kind of crazy right because Cuba's known for cigars everyone 
their livelihood uh, is kind of dependent on it. And, you know, it's, it's something that's well-renowned, right? And so if you take that same logic, you know, United States is known for capitalism and you don't know how to make a business, build a business in a country that's built off of that. And so that's where it's like, you know, if our focus is, is those things, then we need to be able to buckle down, right? Because the resources right. out there, the information is out there, the knowledge is out there. We just got to consume it, then apply it and execute it, right? And then for me, uh, this may be unpopular belief, but I, I, I don't like the term generational wealth. Uh, a lot of people use it as a coin term, you know, generational wealth makes you feel like you didn't do anything for your generation or the generation after you. Right. Um, it's not the truth. Like, Every generation tries to do something for their family uh, long, long down the line. But for me, it, it's not generational wealth. It's generational knowledge. If I can give my daughters the knowledge to be able to do things, to make their own money, to be smart about business, to understand how to do decision, um, make decisions um, and how to be efficient in their processes and come up with systems and things of that nature, that's going to be something that helps them build whatever they need to. And that's going to be tools that I provided them or passed down to them that they're going to be able to execute on and be able to do whatever they need to build or or or, or execute on what should they're looking to do. Um, and then for me, that's what my focus is, right? My daughters have their own business. They're starting it. Uh, and I'm walking them through the process of that. And so I, I just like that aspect a lot. Um, and you know, I coach a lot of people and I get them out of their own ways. And I'm not one of those uh, individuals that's like, you know, hey, do these things. It's like, no, 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 let's let's address the problem. Let's address what you're trying to do. And like I said, most of the time is that individual that's trying to overcome something. And so once we are able to identify that and call it for what it is and say, okay, now we need to execute. I will provide you the application. You need to execute. Um it, it yields results. And so some of these businesses that I've worked with, um, for the most part, they made a lot of money. Uh, and it's like, oh, thank you, Jay. I was like, I didn't really do anything. I like, really think I just like, I got after what you were probably having an issue with. Um, and I helped that mental blockage so that you can understand what you need to do in your business to be able to help it scale. Um, I'll give you an example. I have one restaurant who uh, they make close to $90,000 a month. And when I got with them, they were making close, I think, 20000 a month. Um, and they were very much into their business. Like they're cooking, they're doing everything and all the all they, they were it. So if they were sick, you know, things, the process was slow. Right. Um, you know, they, they didn't have anybody filling in. So I said, Hey, I need you to do me a favor. Um, because I knew that their issue was they were just too much heavily into their business. But like, what are the, what are the issues, the main issues with having someone else cook? Like, tell me what that is. They gave me a list of the reasons. So I said, okay. Um, and say, you know, the timeliness, you know, this and that. And I was like, do me a favor. Next time you go to your restaurant, have your top uh, cook that's under you cook and then put a timer. Don't tell them about the timer. Don't show them the timer. Just put the timer out there, do the timer and see what the time they, they cook. So typically in uh, food services, anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes is, is like a sweet spot. Like that's where you want to be able to get the food out and get it to your guests. Um, when they time them, they realize that their cooks were over, like they're, they were outperforming, like they were doing exactly what they need to do in the time frame that they need to do it in. And so that then gave them like, oh, well, they are doing what they're supposed to do and they're, and they're really prompt with it. And so maybe, maybe we don't have to, you know, try to be into everything. We can kind of let them take this lane. And they did, they let that person take this lane. And so he was now known as their chef, the main chef, uh, that the the owner stepped back a little bit to allow him to do his thing and build out his team. And then they expanded to another restaurant and they just got their second restaurant. And so, like I said, just being able to help people identify some of those key uh, components, but helping them understand it in a way that makes sense. And I, I, I've, I've sent them a bunch of videos and things that they need to learn about, but things that they watch to, to challenge those those thoughts that they have, right? Because it's their baby, but how do you build your baby? Right. You can't, you can't crawl your baby the whole time. At the beginning, yes, you can, right? But when they get two, three, four, five, six, right? Then there's a different approach that you have to take and right. they have to learn some lessons, right? And so I've been able to help uh, tremendously on that end. So um, I'm, I'm just, I, I enjoy, I enjoy thinking about complex problems and figuring out how to solve them, but really helping people see through 
their business through them and then what limitations they may apply to it. No, that, that's that's a definitely interesting perspective to look at it, right? Because I think the same thing when you when you do start a business, uh, the the mindset is that I need to be everywhere. I need to touch everything. Like I need to make my mark because it's my business, right? Yes. Um, but no, that, I, like you said, there's there's maturity and growth there. Like at what point do you uh, you allow it to uh, start to walk on its own? Um, and then you're you're managing your monitoring, right? You're trying to make sure. Uh, you you stay one step ahead, but you also have that brain trust where you have to think of what's next. Um, I think that's the hard part, um, even for myself, right? Like for my little ventures that I have going on, um, it's it's hard to uh, not have your hands on everything at at all times. So. Well, yeah, we'll jump on a call and we can we can get through it. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the yeah. thing. I love those type of problems, um, but yeah, you you just got to really understand like who would you be if you had no limitation to what you can do mm. and a lot of times we don't think in that manner we think about oh if i do this then this will happen if i do this and this will happen every time i've ever planned something like that like okay yeah these are the steps and if i do this these are exactly it, it never turns my plan never comes out to like that way it never right. works out that way um which leads me to to, to believe you know i just got to go through the process um, and then refine it because if I'm worried about what will happen if I do these things and it doesn't pan out the way that I want to, all that is wasted energy and I don't have time to waste energy, right? And so it's more so try to figure out what my solution is. Try, I mean, try to figure out what the problem set is, try to figure out the solution for that and then develop a plan for it. Yes, you need to develop a plan for it, but don't let um, or don't be hesitant on, on moving forward because of the unknown. Everything is unknown but everything around us is created by somebody, right? Somebody created the book, somebody created TV, somebody created the computers that we're on. Somebody somebody, somebody had an idea and they pushed forward and they made this happen and now we, we're using it, right? And it's the same thing with you and your business. If you don't really believe in yourself, then who will? And so, um, yeah, I, I don't want to leave anything on the table. I want to be able to say I've done everything that came to my mind, Um as long as it's part of my priorities and then uh, move on from that. So it's, it's more so like, I really want to see who I become, who I develop myself into, what type of opportunities I want to get into. Like eventually I want to get down to the philanthropist, right. And be able to help folks really build their business and fund those businesses. Um, and so, but for me to do that, I got to make sure that my business is straight uh, and opportunities I have are, are scaling. And so this is more so this part of the process, right. The end goal is to be able to, be better than who I was the year of the, the previous year. And so I, I constantly work on that. Right. No, that, that, I mean, that sums it up very well. So I, I'd be remiss if I didn't steer us a little bit back into the cyber aspect. And then, uh, like, like I always say on the, uh, the show, then we, we land the plane with kind of, uh, what, what, what are you doing outside of, uh, uh, the, the building the businesses and things of that nature? Like, you know, what are you doing with your family? What do you do to, to unwind with that probably 30 seconds you have? <laughs> remain in the day but uh so the the first question being uh when it comes to the, the the cyber aspect well where do you see yourself uh with with that or being in that or um will it be business will it be coaching like what will you do with cyber when you um retire from the military yeah cyber is mainly probably uh, build a defense contracting company that's focused on uh, providing cyber solutions and IT solutions everything with I AI to um, IT functionality so like that's that's probably the where I would like to see myself within the next three years okay so like um, an 801c most likely or yeah possibly I I, I'm not too sure which direction I want to go with it because right. I want to be able to employ people. And so more so be able to, that's why I said defense contract and going after contracts. So if I'm going after contracts, register as SAMs as a business, I can go after contracts and be able to fill it with the, the military community that's looking for opportunities. Um, Cause I'm tired of uh, the gatekeeping for the cybersecurity, you know, there's oh, yes. it's, entry level opportunity it's getting, you need five is years. It better? Is it getting worse? I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, I've just, I've just come across so many issues where like, you have to have five years of experience for an entry level job. That's not an entry level job. Yeah, um, how did I get that? Like, yeah. where did that come from? And so I want to be able to change that narrative to where I get the folks in the position so they can do what they need to do in order to get the skill sets that they need. And so that's why I'm pushing to be able to open those doors and, um, 
Uh, and obviously you can't do that as an active duty member because uh, there's right. a lot of you doing that, but you know, Con most, of my, interest, right? yeah, most yeah. of my mentors are in that space. Um, and that's what kind of pushes me. So being able to enable others to actually learn the skill sets to, to do uh, cybersecurity, IT, or get into AI, um, learn coding, uh, that's, that's, that's my focus. No, that's, that's great, especially uh, again, like it's, it's kind of what the platform is built on, right? That's what that's what we're trying to trying to target because it 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 on a weekly basis it ebbs and flows, right? Like we'll have a a really good story, like this this week uh, coming up on Wednesday. There's a a huge uh, surge when it comes to diversity and bringing women into cybersecurity, which is great. Uh, two months ago, though, it was the exact opposite, right? So like it just depends on uh, really. Um, the initiative being done by big corporations that then trickles down the smaller ones right now. I want to see the I want to see that upended only because large trillion dollar corporations are letting people go and it's it's last in, first out, right? And usually that's D D E and I. So that's what worries me about the uh the prog progress. So I, I see it, it happens, it comes in waves, and then we have mass layoffs. I'm just it's a little disheartening. But for the most part, I do see the growth. I think I think I'm, I'm spoiled, right? So when I started the podcast, we were about seven percent of uh, cybersecurity was people of color. Now I've grown to nine or ten percent, right? In the past two uh, two and a half years, which uh, is, is phenomenal, but not enough. Like I <laughs> I went twice those numbers, right? I went twenty percent, twenty five percent. So I, again, I, I think it's a little bit of being spoiled as well as uh, just it's 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 weird times since COVID. Like things, things are, are pretty strange out, out here in the market. So it's great to see that that's, that'll be uh, one of your initiatives, right? Because you have so so many of them. That'll be one of your initiatives to get that started. So if anybody's going to get it started and, and keep it going, it's probably going to be you. So <laughs> I look it's forward all to wrapped, yeah, it's all wrapped into to that 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 one model for me. So yeah, I think like okay. I said, that I'm doing these other things so I can learn uh, on 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 my time now. What when I transition over then, right? right and i think you're doing it the right way yes. like because a lot of people wait until which is nothing's wrong with that they they wait until the transition uh because there, there is lots of opportunity you have uh lots of uh of mentorship near the end of your career it's like okay you're going to get out so we have to make sure you're not uh you know juggling fruit underneath an underpass we want you to be the best you you can be so you don't make us look bad <laughs> when you get out of the military but it's like no like, like I, I just wish they would do that 10 years out, five years out, you know, but I, I get it. They don't, they, they don't necessarily want to let talent go. Um, but then when they have no choice, it's like, okay, we have to make sure we put the, they have to put their best foot forward. So I, I love the military. I, I again, like you said, it, it's one of the best decisions I made, right? Like my, my thing was also college. I did a year uh, before joining the military uh, and I was working full-time, going to school full-time. Uh, needless to say, I wasn't doing anything, anything well. <laughs> so I was like, I'll join the military. They'll pay for my education. Uh, and I, 20 years later, I was still doing it right. Uh, before I decided to, to, uh, finally retire. So, um, also it's weird parallel. So where, where in New York are you from? Manhattan. Okay. So you're from the, from the city. Got you. Okay. Like, so I'm from Buffalo. So it depends okay, on who okay. I talk to from New York. Either they're like, they'll respect it. they be like, okay, I know Buffalo. Or they'd be like, oh, that's Canada. It's not Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. It's rough. Buff. It's, yeah. it's, it's freezing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's another reason why I joined. I was like, I guess we're warmer. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, that's awesome. So uh, I like to take this time because uh, again, I, I know your time is, is precious, but just to uh, to ask you uh, a couple more questions when it comes to outside of the military, right? Outside of your uh, your your work and your your uh, your your passions that are um, kind of driven to creating businesses. What do you do for your free time? Like, what are you doing with your family when you do have those those precious hours to to spare? Yeah, so um, I, with my family, it's it's, it's very different. Like, I have, I have two daughters; one is uh, nine, the other one is thirteen. Um, and you know, we would like to think, uh, even though we made them, uh, that we have control over their <laughs> their upbringing, right? We we right we they're they're not engineered by us they have their own mindsets they take a little bit of good from both of us and then have something else that we don't know <laughs> where, where that came from right, right um but it's it's more so being able to work with my daughters to see and help them explore what they want to be uh what they're interested in um what drives their their thoughts right what helps them be creative um because you know 
at an early age, when you have that opportunity, that freedom, sometimes it can be taken for granted in other places. They don't even have that. Right. And so a lot of times I'm, I'm just doing things that have to do with, you know, helping them build that creative freedom that they wanted or whatever it is that they they're designing or however they want to do something uh, and spending time doing that. And my youngest daughter, she's really, you know, she'll, she'll put, you know, fabrics together, designs things. And, you know, none of us in our family do that, but she, she definitely does. Right. And so right. being able to be able to, okay, yeah, let's try this. or let's, let's flip this reverse around. Let's, re let's reverse this design around and make a pocket or let's make a wallet on it. So just things like that, like spending time with them doing that. And then my oldest, uh, she's very much into a couple of things space. And so definitely that's along the lines of what I was interested in when I was her age. Uh, so we, we definitely, uh, you know, sync up on that, but then now she's also interested in YouTube and being a YouTuber. It's a thing folks. It's a thing. So, uh, I let her and I allow her to, mm -hmm. to have her space to be uh, creative in doing that. And so, uh, I may have to jump on a YouTube every once in a while with her or shorts or whatever it is. I don't know what I'm doing on YouTube like that, but, you know, just allow, you know, my kids to have that opportunity to figure out what works best for them. Um, I do vet everything before we do it, but right, right. Uh, it's, it's still like, yeah, this is their life. Right. And, you know, I don't want them to feel like they're very limited in their thoughts. And so that's what we do. So they love traveling. That's, that's a, a thing about my, my family. We all love traveling. And so, uh, every year we go somewhere different and kind of focus on, you know, helping them get a different mindset, different perspective and different cultural worldview. Um, outside of that, then the other thing is we're, we're big foodies. And so we, we have, we love food. We love different types of food. And so those are all part of the, the complexity of, of being a salter is like, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be creative, eat food, travel, enjoy it, you know, enjoy life. But so that's, that's what I do uh, on a spare time when, I'm spending, I mean, all my time I'm spending my family. Um, outside of that, that's really it. I mean, I really got time doing anything There's else. no more time. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then everything else. And then sometimes I throw in sleep there every once in a while. But yeah. 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 No, that, that's great. And it brings to mind, uh, it was a TED talk I watched on, on parenting, uh, parenting uh, where basically it's like, uh, again, like you said, like you, you think you have more control sometimes than you actually do. Um, but uh, the way the presenter put it is like you're you're a shepherd and that's your flock, right? Like your uh, your child is a a beautiful uh, mosaic of so many different combinations of of your lineage that you have no control over it. You don't know what crazy aunt or uncle or who is going to manifest themselves in that child, <laughs> and then you just have to do your best. So uh, I I I I feel you on that one. I think. Uh, just from talking to you, I'm sure you're you're an awesome parent. And then when it comes to the YouTube thing, I, I'm that's my youngest too. Like he he loves like doing Roblox and stuff like that. We got him a Roblox camp, so he's learned how to program. And then he wants to demonstrate it on YouTube. So I'm just like, you know what? If that's that that's your outlet. That's your passion and cool. And then maybe maybe it'll teach you a valuable skill you can use down the, down the road, right? Some soft skill you didn't um, necessarily knew you wanted to do or focus on, but you're eight, you know, experiment. And then uh, I'll vet it, right? I'll make sure you're safe out there. So, uh, and then, so the uh, the last question I like to ask always is, because um, I, I know you've been on uh, podcasts uh, in the past, right? So uh, what have I not asked you? Like, what have you wanted someone to ask you that has not been asked? Because, um, you know what I mean? Like I'm coming in with my own bias, right? These are the questions I want to ask you, things I want to know, things I know that the my target audience wants to know about you, but what's something that you're just like, man, I wish they would ask me that question. It just never comes up. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know, because I'm pretty much an open book. Like, I feel like <laughs> I, I do put out anything and everything that I do to be transparent, just to help provide maybe possible inspiration. And I also put out, like I said, my, my L's or not my L's, but my lessons so that right. you can kind of understand, you know, not everything goes to plan. Um, I would say what I do it for. Uh, not a lot of people ask me that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the the one thing I know is um, I'm not concerned about money. Um, and I know a lot of people, it is a, a strong motivator, but it's not a motivator for me. And I've learned that when I'm going through the process of what I'm doing now. And I'm at a point to where it's, 
anything I, I do in life has to be based off of a passion of mine it has to be based off of a purpose in mind because if, if it's not something I want to wake up and do then I don't want to do it I mean I've been offered opportunities and this is a good thing I've been offered opportunities um to make quite a bit of money doing certain things um as far as coaching or consulting for a company helping them um scale or connect uh or market and in my mind I'm like do I really want to do this? I don't know if I do. But uh, you know, when I go through the process, it's like, yeah, this is not this is not it for me, right? I don't right. want to um like I said, I don't mind supporting businesses and, and going there and tackle problems, doing those things, but uh, it has to have a, a core purpose for me and and that's what matters more to me than anything else. I know the money's gonna come, I'm not worried about that. And so I would just say anything in life, just make sure it's connected to something that's gonna make you um whole something that's going to sustain you something that you want to wake up in the morning to do um and something that's going to be the driving factor if you're laying in your bed and like i don't want to get up uh sometimes it's difficult to find those things and some people live their life without finding those things but if we live in this free world well we have the opportunity and we have way more resources than our ancestors did that our our family members did in the past you know just take advantage of that and just really push it to the limit find out what works best for you and then attack it so i would just say yeah find that purpose um even if it takes you your lifetime uh the journey is going to be well worth it there you go like that that sums it up right there that, that's perfect uh and i think a lot of that comes from respect for yourself right and having that integrity uh, because like you said, the money will come. Uh, it's no, it serves you no purpose to, to begrudgingly get out of bed. Mm. Like, that's just like, what are you doing it for? Like, what, what would be the purpose of you? Uh, like you starting all of what you're starting, right? That, that, uh, that empire or legacy, whatever you want to call it, uh, and, and be, be doing it for someone else other than your, your, yourself and your family. So no, that, that's great. And I think that's a, a good note in the podcast episode on thank you very much for your time i'm so glad you reached out uh i think sometimes when it comes to the uh the podcast it's, it's more for me than it is for the audience sometimes so like this was definitely a, a good one very inspiring so i have uh, uh all the ones this season like I, I'm, I'm i feel very blessed to have the the uh the community that i have and the people who have reached out uh to make those connections because uh, again when you're uh your president i'm gonna have to be like hit you up for a favor <laughs> man but like, hey listen i remember <laughs> <laughs> we're using the podcast uh, back in 2023 gotcha 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 covered. so it's good to make these connections and then you never know what the future might hold right so i, I definitely want to stay connected i definitely want to get you back on the podcast uh sometime in the near future so uh whenever you uh have the time we can kind of sync up again and make this happen because i think the audience would definitely before, before like i retire it. let's see how i run it up that's like said my goal 2020 let's see get a thousand people higher I want, i'm interested to see uh, how many I can do? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna keep those, keep looking at those stats, man. I'm gonna keep refreshing them. Like, how many you get this time, right? Um, because that that is a very noble goal. So I, I definitely want to see you uh, uh, hit hit that goal and exceed it, because we definitely need it, especially uh, building up this community. And hopefully, because uh, I we're gonna have all your links uh, and bio in the uh, description. Hopefully, this brings people into your uh, your nonprofit uh, or even for profits, like whatever, whatever, just your your enterprise, right? To uh, to be able to upskill, to be able to break into uh, the uh, the field, and then just be able to make those connections. Because like your Facebook group sounds like an amazing time, so I'm definitely gonna probably join it myself, right? Because I, I want to see what's going on in there as well. As a treasure trove of resources, like that is yeah, there's, yeah. It's, it's designed that way. I can't answer everyone's question, but like I said, we got just imagine people finding resources and just dropping in there to share right. like oh, you know it's just ju jewels being dropping jewels in there so yeah i, I definitely want to hop in there myself and there's you know that way i can share it with the community uh uh as well so look for all that information definitely uh continue to tune in you can find me at ryry Rai security guy that's ryry Rai security guy i'm on linkedin clubhouse twitter and threads and where can they find you well, you can find me on linkedin jay salters um or you can also join our facebook group uh act now education military uh community facebook group um yeah and just feel free to reach out you know my network is your network and if there's anything i could do to help i will but make sure you do your due diligence and, and do your own research first uh before you hit me up uh right. put in that work and just, just you know <laughs> but yeah um yeah we're here to support man we're here to serve sounds great so yeah definitely uh hit up 
uh, Jay, for uh, for all of that information and uh, to to just be part of the community and uh, to bring it back to the rest of us, because maybe you have something that you want to share in the community as well, not just taking, but you also have something you want to put out there uh, to the world. So with that being said, continue to tune in, hit us up by the uh, the, the social medias that go by our name. Uh, you can hit me up again. I'm at Ride Ride Security Guy. Stay safe, stay secure.